Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. So the patch 4.8 notes just dropped, and not only are we getting balance changes, you know, buffs and nerfs, we're also getting a batch of new cards. So a lot of exciting stuff that just dropped all at once, and I'm really excited to talk about them today. You know, theorycraft the cards, where I think they're gonna go. I haven't seen them yet. This is genuinely my first reaction and my first impressions of these new cards and also the balance changes. I've not seen any spoilers. And uh, yeah, it's the first time I'm covering the patch notes in this way in quite some time. So I'm really excited to hop in and uh, yeah, definitely give my opinion of what's going on. And it has been quite a bit, but we have to get Detective Tempo on the case for this. Alright, so patch 4.8 notes. Updates will be live August 17th. Okay, welcome to our next variety patch. We've received some feedback that it's a bit hard to quickly see which changes affect standard and which affect eternal. We've separated them into two sections for this patch. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Now we're going to have like, you know, a category. We're going to have standard nerfs and eternal nerfs and buffs. So that's really nice. Just, you know, separate it, make it easier for um, the players to digest. Last variety patch, we were light on standard changes, but this time we want to make sure we dethrone some monument and some other meta decks so the meta can continue to evolve alongside Eternal. Perfect. Awesome. We already get a little bit of a glimpse of what's getting hit, which is some monument. Very good hit. And yeah, I think a really nice approach to the meta itself. All right, so let's talk about some new cards here. Two mana slow speed spell for Piltover and Zahn. Deal one to an enemy or the enemy nexus and one to another. Okay, two mana slow speed, deal one to two things. So it's static shock, right? Or whatever it's called, uh, which is usually four mana fast, deal two just like this, but also draw one. This is two mana, you don't get the draw, it's slow speed. Completely fine. It's another P and Z removal card, which I think there's already too much of in the game. So it's a little bit redundant, but I mean, that's pretty nice. You can target the enemy Nexus with it. We could probably use this actually in like P and Z aggro play styles. Think like Championless Burn, which has existed in the past. Would probably not even mind this too much. Yeah, you know, you can use it in like an aggro mirror and deal with a Legion Saboteur while also double dipping one Nexus damage. Uh, combine this with blowback, you hit for like four. You know, like this could actually just be like an aggro card, but yeah, it's probably gonna be decent in control strategies as well. Just like, okay. It's kind of like um, less good pie toss because you have to like do it at once so you don't get it twice. So yeah, it's, it's fine. Fine card. Um, Crystalline Storm Raptor, 5 mana 3 to Bird, okay, so the subtype is important for like Nico strategies or, you know, a bunch of subtype stuff that's been going on recently. 5 3 2 is a terrible stat line. Um, play deal 2 to all other units. Ah, Avalanche, but on a unit. Okay, it's also Bird, which is interesting. Um, I'm not sure like if subtypes care about that. It is just... Avalanche. So this is going to be played in control, of course, like Freljord ramp strategies. Having six copies of Avalanche is really good because uh, they lost Blighted Ravine, right? Quite some time ago when rotation happened. So in standard, there's only Avalanche and now there's going to be Storm Raptor. In Eternal, there's going to be Avalanche, Storm Raptor, and Ravine. So there's going to be, uh, what, nine? Nine copies of Avalanche in Eternal? Wow, very fun. All right. Bilge Water card, two mana fast speed. Deal one to a unit, spawn one for each damage dealt. Whoa! Alawi is getting a support card that's also removal. That's really interesting. Fast speed, deal one. Another ping though, man. There's a lot of pings in this game now. One HP units just like can no longer exist in Legends of Runeterra. So yeah, two mana fast speed from Bilge. So right, it's comparable to Make It Rain. Except it's only pinging once, but it's also spawning one for each damage dealt. Oh, hey, 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 hey guys. The for each damage dealt insinuates we should be playing kegs. That way, if keg resolves and you ping for like two, three, four, then you're going to spawn one for each damage dealt. You can spawn like a three tentacle with two keg. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, Alawi uh, really eating good. That's a really strong card. Um, I'm not even gonna try to say this word. Dark Wraith. I think it's proliferating. Proliferating Dark Wraith. One, one, one. Shadow Isles. Last breath, create in deck. Here, let me uh, zoom in. This text is really small. There we go. Um, last breath, create in deck an exact copy of your strongest proliferating Dark Wraith in deck. Then double the stats. 
Oh, you know, it kind of reminds me of that Sharima predict card that gets stronger every time you see him in a prediction, but like no one's ever played it. So we want to play Dark Wraith, buff the first one, let it die, it goes into your deck, and then it gets stronger. And then you resummon it and then you buff it and it gets stronger. So like, this is not a strategy you can just kind of like throw in. You kind of have to deck build around this and try to get, you know, as much value as you can and maybe even use it as like pressure win con. I'm not really sure what a deck like this would look like besides something like, I don't know, Targon has really cheap and easy buffs, right? And they have hand buffs too. Like Shadow Wild's Targon, that's kind of a weird identity. We haven't really seen that before for this kind of thing, right? We've had Nightfall, that's Darkness. I mean, that's uh, Shadow Wilds and Targon, but it's not like this, right? This is a really weird card. I'm going to see like where this card goes. All right, uh, Noxus card, two mana landmark crimson banquet hall kind of think uh vladimir then right allies cost one less when you play an ally deal two to it what this is the most broken card i've ever seen um <laughs> okay so vlad braum is on the menu for sure right this is obviously what the deck is telling us to do as well it's telling us play crimson pigeon on one and then play like Crimson Banquet Hall on two, and then play Braum on three, because allies cost one less, which means you can play Braum on three, Vlad on four, which is probably the most unbalanced thing I've ever heard in my life. So we can play Crimson Pigeon on one, we can play uh, the one, one, two, I forgot what it's called now, where you summon an ally, it deals one to it immediately, and then also gives itself one, one, yeah. I haven't seen it in forever because it was rotated, of course. So yeah, this is going to be really interesting. I think Vlad Braum is eating good. Scargrounds is just eating... Oh, wait. Ooh, you can't curve Banquet Hall and Scargrounds very cleanly, can you? That's really nasty, actually. But if you run two of each and you find one of them, you can reliably play around the one that you do draw. So yeah, I, this is a good card. This is really, really broken, actually. I think this could actually be played in... Um, a lot of strategies when you play an ally deal two to it you can play this in overwhelm strategies as well things that have like you know high attack but enough hp to survive and then i mean you're just taking the discount obviously you can't play aggro because all your units would die but you know what i mean it's like some interesting stuff you can do with this outside of vlad braum maybe but vlad braum obviously eating really good with that card um next i almost skipped one Mr. Thrift. <laughs> Let's go. Macklemore starts playing, bro. He's going to pop some tags. One mana, zero, three, Mr. Thrift from Bandle City. When one or more of your traps or boons activate, plant two of it in that player's deck. Whoa. Hey, yo. That's a really strong one drop. And then you slam Esmus on two. Hey, yo, and Esmus is buffing Mr. Thrift, and Mr. Thrift is just double dipping all... Dude, this is like Ava, right? Because, like, Ava doubles the puff caps and the flash bombs. Mr. Thrift buffs the traps, boons, everything. Huh? Actually, it doesn't double, just plants two of it. But, like, that's still really crazy. Huh. That's really cool. I like that card a lot. It's really strong, actually. It's going to be really good for Bard. Cosmic Call, 2 mana burst speed, Targon, um, 2 mana, okay, 2 mana burst speed. Invoke a, a Celestial that costs 7 or more, or pay 8 to also reduce the cost of your Celestials everywhere by half, round it up. So this is really good for Eternal, where you can play like more Celestial guys, you can play like the Zoe, you can play the 4 drop Allegiance guy that gives the discount already, and then this is really broken. In Standard, like, I don't think this is going to do that much to Celestials. It is a great effect, though. That's a really strong card. Really strong. Iris. 2 mana 1 1 Elusive from Ionia. Yes, Ionia needs more Elusives. Nexus Strike. Summon a random Husk. Are you kidding me? Dude, her art is really good. I'm not going to lie to you guys. That art is phenomenal. I will be full screening her art when she comes to the client. Okay, so be there. Be there when I do that. So yeah, that's um, that's really good. It's a husk card, so we can play this in every Evelyn deck because, you know, Evelyn allows you to deck build anywhere that says a husk on the card and it says husk. So yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, sure. I mean, this could also be played with Kaisa, 
right? And Evelyn Kaisa, if Kaisa ever gets a buff later on down the road, and then she can have a guaranteed elusive, right, to her... Uh... Because now that Kaisa lost Quick Attack, I actually think elusive is really, 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 really important. So, like, level 2 Kaisa with elusive is probably going to be the best thing you can do. So, this helps for that, too. Balin. 4 mana, 0, 4 formidable. So, more formidable support helps Galio. Um, attack. Grants formidable allies everywhere, 0, 1. Most broken card I've ever seen. That is so incredibly strong. Uh, assuming you're attacking on evens, you get three attacks with this, right? Get attack four, attack six, and attack eight. That's plus three to formidable allies everywhere, which is basically for formidable plus three plus three. So you're getting a four Demacia type effect pretty much, right? Kind of. I'm stretching a little bit, but you know what I mean. For all of your formidable allies everywhere. Not only that, this helps Galio level pretty much on summon. If you get Galio down and Balin has gotten two hits off, I mean, you're just like really, really good. Uh, this is one of the strongest cards I've seen. This is a really good effect. And it's a zero four by itself. And it grants itself a zero one when it attacks. So it's a zero five if left unchecked. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think formidable mid range could actually be real. And uh, there's not a lot of great fearsomes in the meta to like outplay it. So uh, where's my spiders? All right, Valley of Imitation, three mana, Sharima landmark. When you play a follower, transform me into an exact copy of it. This round, I retain granted buffs. Hmm. Mm, mm. This gets really spicy. Obviously, there's a lot of combos. There's a lot of things people are gonna try with this. Is it good? Seems okay. It's follower. It you know it says play a follower and not champion so we can't get double dipping on champions which would obviously be the best value so um i'm curious to see what the best combo pieces are for valley of imitation but yeah there's definitely something there and this round like what are people going to be doing calrix and stuff like that i i don't know there's some goofy things in my mind so i can't wait to see how this plays out oh and that's it for the new cards all right so now we're getting on to the buffs and nerfs all right all right just getting right into it standard nerfs champion strength uh, used to be 9 cost, give allies 4-4, four, four. if you have the attack token, also give them scout, cool. Now it's 8 cost, so they're reducing the cost by 1, back to where it was, give allies 4-4 four, four this round, and rally. No scout, no scout anywhere, just give allies 4-4 four, four, and rally, which means you want to open attack with your development, then the opponent actually gets to trade with you and gets to play the game, uh, gets to lower your champion strength value, and then you play champion strength to rally, which again gives the opponent more interaction, right? They can now respond to the spell, they can respond to the units that are damaged or weakened from the first trade, and then they can actually play the game. So yeah, this is just a more fair version of champion strength. The whole lead the turn with it, and then the opponent just like holds it while you beat them down is kind of not fair, not interactive. This gives a lot more opportunity for interaction. And yes, it's one cost cheaper, but you're not attacking twice. Well, I mean, you are, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, it's uh, definitely toned down. Sump Monument, three cost plant four to now four cost plant five. This, I don't know if this kills it. This is really good. This is a great change. Um, four plant five. That's kind of a big deal. I think the four cost matters more than planting more shrooms, IMO. Four cost sump monument. So instead of turn three, you play turn four. Instead of playing it for three in the late game, you're playing it for four in the late game, which is pinching your resources, which makes it a bit harder to cleanly play everything you want to play. Good nerf. Not sure if this is going to one-shot it, though. Condense. Now from two to three. That's a cute little nerf. I think that's completely fair as well. Condense also deserved it. We're happy that Condense has brought more exciting finishers into the meta. What, like Riptide Rex? I'm not excited about that. We're pushing it up slightly to make your second copy Riptide Rex a little less free. Just a little, yeah. Just, you know, a tiny bit free. Condense has a lot of problem targets like Ava, like Karina, like Riptide Rex, like Broadmain. A lot of really annoying choices, not just Rex, so... Making it three costs, just a global nerf across the board. Nice. Swain. Whoa, we're nerfing Swain? Is Swain Alawi that broken? Level up 12 non-combat damage, level up 16 non-combat damage. I guess Swain Alawi is just that broken, guys. So we don't have Ravenous Flock in the game, like in standard, unless you're on multiple copies of Swain. 
we don't have Death's Hand anymore. The only self-damage Swain Alawi has is literally the Watchful Idols. And to be fair, the interaction is really strong. The double idol leveling Swain is kind of cringe. But now if you don't open double idol or like an idol at all, you're not leveling Swain in Alawi Swain. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm getting here. Level up 16 non-combat damage. That really sucks. If you want to reliably level Swain now, it's going to have to be like Swain P and Z. Or maybe Swain Bilge with a lot of pings. With, um, you know, not the Alawi stuff. That's hard. Um, yeah, I, he's just gonna, like, level up slower, less consistently. Sure. Purifying Flames. Grant an ally in hand 3-3 three, three, and another 2-2 two, two, to now grant two allies in hand 2-2. Two, two. This is... They're also nerfing the Teemo Elusive deck. Wow. This is kind of nice. Grant two allies in hand 2-2. Two, two. All right. Yeah. So just a, a minus one one nerf. I don't think that really matters that much. And this is funny. Elusives are too good with stat buffs. More news at 11. Yeah, we've been knowing this since the game came out. We've been knowing this. So yeah, Purifying Flames, in case you guys don't know, was being abused in Teemo Targon, right? It's basically elusive aggro where you just hand buff your elusive units and then play them, attack. It's really unfair because the opponent can't block. And then you also play some monument to prevent your own death and you get to hit like one or two more turns with all your elusives and it's kind of cheesy. So yeah, Purifying Flames, nerf to that deck. All right. Oh, not Pirouette. No, I need Pirouette, man. All right. Two mana plunder reduce cost by one. Oh. Oh, three mana reduces cost by two. This doesn't matter. You just can't play it for two anymore. Oh, who cares? What? <laughs> Let's go. We're fine. Pirouette has been running circles around both Standard and Eternal. True. This change aims to bring down Pirouette's power as a control tool and plunder enabler and reserve its massive tempo swings. Hey, that's me. For decks willing to go the extra mile to enable it. Editor's note, tempo. Hey, that's me. They're talking about me, the number one pirouette user on the entire server. Okay, so yeah, that's that's really cool. Mmm, that's fine. So yeah, it's less good in control. It's just, it's completely fine in like Jinani, of course, right? And in uh, Samira Fizz. They're basically just keeping its identity for the aggro decks that want to plunder. And Jinani procs this very easily with, you know, Tusk Speaker with a Jin Lotus Trap from hand or field. And then of course, Samira Fizz is gonna be pop and plunder all day. So, oh, okay, that's, that's completely fine. Completely fine, cool. Fish Fight from two to three, perfect. Thumbs up emoji, really good nerf. This card is really strong, deserves the nerf. Goodbye, Jaxorn. Goodbye, Aatrox Vein. That's kind of it, that was the only, I mean, Akshan. Akshan Demacia would also probably abuse this, I think. But yeah, okay, completely fine. Um, I like that nerf. It's not dead or anything, it's just like a bit weaker. Lord Bromane from 3-5 to 3-4. Just a little, little touch on his HP, make him a little squishier. I mean, Black Spear can hit him, that's cool, but like, more HP is still pretty tanky, so yeah, he'll he'll still be fine. Bolts of Helia from 4 to 5. That is a massive nerf. Whoa! I think Vaults of Helia is dead, that's really bad. <laughs> Playing Vaults on 5. Um, I mean, Rock Bear Shepherd on 3, Countdown 1, Countdown 2. I mean, you're still gonna get Nasus, but like... At what cost? Well, I mean, the cost is five. We see that right here. <laughs> Deserved. All right, next. Squeaker from 2-2 two, two to 1-2. Two. Okay, so Jinx aggro. Taking a little bit of um, a nerf here, too. That kind of sucks that Squeaker is, like, good for one patch, and then he is nerfed. Where Squeaker's been in the game for a while, you know? Been a good rumble card, but... Mm. Yate to see him go like that, I guess. Yate to see him go. Return of Wrench. Grand Zero One. No more impact. No more impact, just one HP. Hmm. So it's less aggressive, more defensive. Wow, I can't believe that, like, Jinx Bandle discard is getting hit this hard immediately after it, like, existed. Like, just, man, that deck was good for a patch. Aggressive, I actually want to read the context for this. Aggressive discard decks have burned a hole in the meta. Yeah, but not this one. We're targeting some of their early board presence and impact access to dial back their immense reach. I mean, I know, I'm not trying to defend it because I mean, I don't even like discard, discard. I hate discard jinx. I'm never going to play that deck, but like, I just find it odd how quickly it's like beat down. Our legal team has thrown the book at Squeaker and this is the price he's paid for our extended extortion. After being progressively buffed, we've cornered him. Don't be a Squeaker because we will find you. Okay, I'm not squeaking. You're, you're right, you're right. Completely deserved nerf. Um, 
return a wrench as well. You guys are right. Don't. Yep. Yeah, nope. Don't look at me. I, I'm not being a squeaker. Don't worry. I agree. I agree. Never mind, guys. We're not going to talk about it any further. No more. Fleet Admiral Shelley. Five mana, three, three. Uh, not a tune. <laughs> Fleet Admiral Shelley is a war criminal. Oh, my God. With over 300 confirmed quills, they cannot be twisted with spell mana. That is true. They can't. So we're nerfing Samira Fizz again. Finally, Shelly, though. I think Shelly has always been the enabler. Shelly's also... Like, this nerf also impacts Nami. So now Nami deck's also catching a stray, where, you know, you play the same kind of core elusive late-game package as Samir Fizz, and now they both hold BL. Alright. Buffs now. We can talk about the good news. The good news is buffs. Warlord's Palace. Really, Akshon hasn't been a meta presence for a while. Bringing Momentous Choice back down to a single spell opens up space for him to get back to action, I guess. Haha, <laughs> back to action. I like that. Countdown 8, sure, whatever. Uh, I'm not really personally a fan of Akshon's strategy, so I mean, whatever though. Whatever. Poro King buff. Level up you summon six other new Poros. Level up you summon six other new Poros. When I level up, create a special snacks in hand. That's really good. I think that, like, Poro King was a bit clunky in his design because you'd have to, like, play a Poro to level him, but you'd also have to play a Poro to get his snack. So it kind of made you... Uh, I don't know. Like, for six, you could, like, level him, play a one-cost Poro, but, like, that one-cost Poro should already be out of your hand. It just made it to where, like, a lot of hands were awkward and you weren't leveling him, and if you were, you were not getting snacks. But now... It's a two-for-one deal. Obviously, they sell that as a problem as well. And it's like, boom, you level up and you get a snack. And then if you play more Poros, you get more snacks. And that's broken because you need the mana to play the snacks, right? Nice. Very good. Very clean. Frosted snack. Frostbite an enemy. Good. I don't know why this had Brittle Steel effect. This should always Frostbite just like any enemy. Perfect. Good buff for the Frosted snack there. That one sucked. I hated this card. I hated getting the Frosted snack. Now I'm super excited about it. That's a really strong effect. Blimp Pack Poacher going from 2-2 to 2-3. Cute little buff. It's like one of the lesser played bushes. And he was really easy to kill in the mid game um, if you did get him off. So yeah, 2-3 is going to make him a bit stickier. Make him better at using his effect. Bristle Pog. Once I was transformed, give me 1-1. One, one. First time I was just give me 2-1. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Dude, so if you guys don't know, I have been playing Nidalee Aggro using Bristle Hog as like an early game unit. And it has been like insane. I've killed Heimer Jace on turn 5 with said deck. This is now going to be broken. I think Nidalee Aggro is so real now. I even brought it to the uh, to a gauntlet, right? To practice for the open, and it performed there too. So don't worry. Um, come by the stream and see that deck. I'll be uh, making some content for it because I'm actually fairly certain that deck is real now. This is aimed at making Nidalee's ambushing friends more cohesive. A stronger payoff for a more stream... Uh, I'm not going to say that word. Conditional should be... Uh, should encourage playing more of the Brush Shadows together. Yes. Okay, good. Bristle Pog. Pog. Love it. Riven. Each round the first time you increase my power, increase it by twice. Each round the first time you increase my power, grant me that much power. Much better effect. So basically the buff is now permanent. She gets to keep it. Whereas in her old form, you would buff her and then she loses it when the round ends. Now she gets to keep it. So she's like permanently scaling, which is really strong, especially if you turbo level Riven and you have any amount of protection for her. She gets away with this twice. She just won the game. You can now reliably use Riven as Pressure plus win con all in one package and you use protector. So this is probably going to actually, I mean like Riven Yi, right? Riven and Ionia is a really good strategy for something like this because you need spell protection and you need like buffs. Riven uh, gets both of those from Ionia. Master Yi also benefits from those and also from the pieces. This is actually just Riven Yi, I, th I think is going to be real. This is really nice. Nami. Level up, you've gained seven. Now you level six with a... You've played six spells with an allied Nami in play. This is a completely different effect. Much more reliable. Much easier to do. Oh, wow. Yeah, Nami's coming back. It's so much easier to level her now. When you play... No way. No way, dude. No way, dude. Uh, when you play a spell, grant 2-1 to the weakest other ally that isn't immobile. Whoa, man. No, I don't want this back. Dude, I hate Nami elusives. I hate this strategy. So she's easier to level. 
you, you spam six spells, a lot of them can be casted from the same spell twice type thing, and then you now the elusive uh, pranks and elusives and... Oh, okay. Yeah, Nami's good. Sun Guardian Revert, though. Hey, now that Crimson Pigeon and Samira have been tuned down, it seems safe to turn back on the lights. Good. Sunburn can come back. Sun Guardian, really strong card. Sunburn, pretty cool deck. Nice. Dragon Guard Lookout, 3 5 to 5 5. Like, no one has ever seen this card be played, but 5 5 is actually kind of good. Then we have a rally for dragons. Sure, um, dragons as a pattern hasn't performed well in ages. Ha, <laughs> I get it. Age of dragons. These changes aim to bring up a few of their weakest cards, help them bring up. Okay, should be decent. Definitely try it. Thread the needle to two cost. Good. Like that. Small change. Yep. Strafing. He what the? Whoa! Why are we healing five now? An ally enemy striking a uh, giant. Heal at five! Bro, this card's broken! This card's so broken. Heal five. Hey, yo, we just get to full heal our dragon. So, triple single. Triple strafing. That's all the striking we really need. I mean, bruh, if, you know, pre nerf fish fight, I mean, I would think about that too. This is kind of crazy. Javana confront. Okay, Grant and Ally Challenger. Dude, dragons are getting so much love. That's fantastic. Grant and Ally Challenger. Grant and Ally Challenger if it's a dragon. Draw one. Oh, we got draw in dragons, and it's tied to Shivana champion spell, and it's also Challenger. It's just entrancing lure from Jack Zorn, but for dragons, let's go. This is a fantastic card. This card's really good. Uh, I'll be playing Shivana Dragons for sure. I will be I will be building this and I'll be playing dragons. This is nice because dragons are also a beginner deck that the game gives you now as you start up Legends of Runeterra and play through the tutorial. So this is great that the dragons get a lot of love. So now new players can gravitate towards that strategy more often. Dawning Shadow, six mana, slow speed. Sure, that's a really strong card. It's slow speed vengeance. Man, that's actually really good for like darkness. It's also really good for Heimer Jace. I'm not a fan of this, but here we are. Rocket Barrage. No, 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 please don't buff Rocket Barrage. Deal three to an enemy one. Deal four to no, the Janani killer. Go wide decks have had a tendency to take over recent lore metas. That is not true, man. That's because Avalanche just isn't popular. That's because you guys won't make a Freljord win con that is that, ah, you know? where you want to ramp, but there's no win con for it. So this is this is not aggro deck's fault. This is uh, Freljord Order's nowhere to be seen's fault. And it's not even true, actually. We're looking to improve a handful of anti-aggro tools to help give decks more valid answers against these game plans. Why PNZ, though? Why Rocket Barrage, though, man? Deal four. This is just like, see, this is not. Listen, 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 guys. A handful of anti-aggro tools to help give decks more valid answers against these game plans that's not what this is this is now a one card win con where if rocket barrage resolves on my gin i just have to surrender on the spot this is not helping against the game plan this is instantly winning the game upon resolution this is cap don't listen to him cap eradication uh five cost now aha so much control is getting buffed stop okay Jax, level up equip allies of struck for 12, level up you've attacked for 16. Power of equipped allies. So instead of striking, you just have to do the attack call. So that means like you can't do it on defense. It has to be during attack call, but like the strike doesn't have to resolve. It's just fine. This is not a buff, it's not a nerf, it's just an adjustment. That's why it's called like that. Alright. Realms Caretaker from a Yordle to a Fey. That's really weird. First time I think I've seen this where a card gets a different subtype. Now it's a Fey. So it's getting Fey buffs instead of Yordle buffs. Interesting. Hmm. Pretty pretty interesting, yeah. Portal Scholar, same thing from Yordle to Fey. Hmm, alright, alright. I see you. I think that's probably better. I think Fey is like a better subtype to have for like these later game cards. The Yordle ones you usually want to put on like early game units and then you can buff them. So, this is kind of interesting. I don't know what Fey buffs there are, though. Hmm. I don't know. I don't really know how much of a difference this makes. Lee Sin, buffer Eternal. Level up, you play 8 spells. So yeah, Lee Sin combo is back. You can play Lee Sin, Zoe, and Eternal. And that's a very good climbing deck. Withering Mist. Um, Drain 2. Yeah, really good control card. The Fangs. Wow! Finally reverting Fangs after like 2 years. That's crazy. Back to a 3-2. Good card. Egg Nivia going to 2 HP. Good card. Thorny Toad. Huh? 
Going from a 1-4 to a 3-1. Good card. That's actually much better. Because, like, you want it to die. And it can also trade aggressively. Uh, that's really strong. And also heals you still. From a 1-4 to 3. 3-1 three actually makes more sense. 1-4 is actually a really nasty stat line. Stat line kind of sucks. Alright, good job, Thorny Toad. Yon, 7-6. to six. Nice buff. Hatchling, 4-3 to 5-4. Ooh, kind of a scary buff for elusives. Scattered Pod, 6-5-6. 5-5-5, six, five, six, five, 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 no more attune. Um, uh, kind of irrelevant. Mountain Scryer, fantastic. Along with the new card that we just saw earlier being released, Celestials are going to be very good in Eternal. Ancient Croc, fearsome. Uh, irrelevant. Swiftwing Lancer, 5-4 five, to 5-5. Five, five. Pretty good for Elites in Eternal. I think Elites will actually run that card. Companion, 5-6. Kind of irrelevant, but pretty cool. Chevalier, 3-2 three, to 3-3. Three, three. Kind of irrelevant, but pretty cool. Prodigy, 3-1 three, to 3-2. Three, kind of irrelevant, but pretty cool. <laughs> three, 3 combo. Fuzzy Caretaker, 3-2 three, to 3-3. Three, three. Uh, pretty irrelevant, but kind of cool. 4 combo, nice. We got 4 of them in a row. Loping Telescope, 2-3-2. Uh, two, two, three, two. Very strong. Newbie, 0 2 to 1 2. Very cute, very nice. Arbiter, 6 6 to 7 7. Sure, I mean, this is like, um. Arbiter and also Caretaker is Shen Lulu buffs. Shen Lulu, kind of nice. Really fun strategy for Eternal. Not the best, but it is fun. Giddy Sparkologist, 3 3. Cool. Wish, 2 cost. Cool. Star Tipped Peak, 1 cost. Hard suck. Rhyme Fang Wolf, 3 3. Pretty strong. Outriders. That's okay. Warding Stones. That's okay. Molten Breath. That's actually kind of strong at 5. Hello. 5 mana slow speed strike 2. That's really good. Broodmother. Nice. That's a pretty good card. 7-7 seven, seven for um 7. For dragons. It just contests Eclipse. That's it. If you don't want to play Eclipse Drag, you can play this. It's also okay for scouts. Like, not really, no. Genevieve would probably come down and do the job on 6. This card doesn't really need to come down ever. Eh, irrelevant. Now, the more I think about it. Uh, a tune. It's, I've never seen this card played. Three, 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 four. Okay. Guardian four five. Ah ah ah. Ew 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 ew. Next. Uh, ah, ah, ah next. Oh my goodness. I don't want to look at these. Vladimir. Deal one to each ally to my right. Now play deal one to any number of allies to deal that much to an enemy. Yo, Vladimir on play effect is so cool. Now his Q actually makes some sense. He's gonna he's gonna slurp. Vladimir has struggled to make a splatter for quite some time, so we're giving him a new play effect to help him interact with the board and level more consistently. You've had five allies survive damage? Still. But, like, his on-play effect is different. So, yeah, he doesn't have the attack effect. Now he's an on-play. And then he probably gets it for this. He keeps it in his leveled-up form, but he also still has the on-play effect. Deal one to any number of allies to do damage to an enemy. Attack for each attacking ally. Deal one to it. Drain. Cool! Wow, Vladimir is awesome now. That's a really cool effect. And that's it for the changes. The last Runeterra opens will be Eternal and go along with the Eternal rank. Join the fray, 9293. The field has now been set for competitors in the mystery event. That means winners of future Runeterra opens will no longer qualify for the event. We're working on getting the logistics and structure of the event together, so expect more details. Uh, cool. Emporium. Welcome to Legends of Runeterra's new shop. Oh, wow, there's an Emporium? That's cool. It's like the Blue Essence Emporium in League. Emporium features four different types of offers, from common to legendary, the mix of green shards, coins, stardust purchase options. Wow! More on stardust later. Shiny, new currency. Will I be able to obtain cosmetics that were special event cosmetics, including items from previous battle passes? Yes, these items have a chance to appear. The most surefire way to get a cosmetic from the battle pass is to purchase it when it's live and active, of course, but you can still get it at a later date. Very cool. So you can get, like, um... The Ascended, you know, I think that's a, one of the cool passes that a lot of people missed was the Ascended one when uh, Sharima first came out. So now you can get some of the cosmetics for it. Nice. Um, No, right. Makes sense. How will Battle Pass items be priced? The LDR is that they'll be much cheaper to buy cosmetic via the pass. You have a chance of snagging the Emporium, but it'll cost more. And this makes sense. Don't play Path while I still get POC items. Sometimes will cosmetics gain from com competitions such as Runeterra opens. Or Gauntlet up here? No, of course not. How often does the Emporium update? There are different types of rarity, each with their own update frequency. Check out your own Emporium. Ah, oh, that's so cool. I love this idea. The Emporium is a huge update. I love that. Path of Champions. 
Uh, makes sense. Stardust. Duplicate champion fragments and relics will be converted to Stardust. Stardust can be used to purchase gold and reliquaries, or to buy some Path of Champion specific items that are offered. Cool. Uh, these relics, check out the stats. Faded, Empower 10, over 1, Regen, Challenger. Oh yeah, this is more Path of Champion stuff. Alright, I'll, I'll scroll through these for you guys. I'm attacking, can't take damage or die. Cost 1, less for each ally. Play deal 3 to all other allies. Game start, create 7 copies. Shuffle 5, level 2 champions in your deck, and double their stats. That's a really fun one. Get a little crazy with it. Plunder, I cost 1 less. I have 1-1 one, one for each different round. You've damaged the enemy Nexus. Why I'm summon, create a random 7 cost unit. Other 1 cost allies have over 1 quick attack and fury. Sheesh. Especially when you buff them up, that's going to be kind of crazy. Allies with a subtype have 1-1 one, one and overwhelm. There you go, POC. Enjoyers. We're including a slew of adjustments across several portions of the Path of Champions. Those champions will now be available to obtain. Bop, 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 bop. The following support champion loadout has been adjusted. Bop. Champion decks. Bop. Adventuring nodes. Wow, POC's eating good. What the? Bop. All that good stuff. Relic adjustments. Bop. Bop, 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 bop. Item adjustments. Oh my god, dude. POC has their own section, essentially. Wow, look at all this. So shiny, so cool. Bug fixes. Updated text on created ambush spells to clarify the mechanic. Updated text and deck build to better reflect the difference between standard and eternal. And that's it. Woo, that was a lot to get through. That was a hefty amount. Really, really big. So to sum it up, I think the standard cards are all pretty impactful. I think some are interesting, like this one. And I think this is a really good card for eternal. And... Yeah, I mean, these are pretty fun. I think Galio is actually kind of real. And I think the the buffs and nerfs were all aimed at like really good things, especially the nerfs, all toning down like the top five decks. And then the buffs, you know, really helping things people want to see. The Poro King, people want to see that. Bristle Hog, I want to see that. Riven, Nami, ooh, ooh. Sun Guardian coming back, really fair, like Reaver on the nerf. Dragons, Dragons got a lot of love. So that, that's pretty nice. I think um, they're definitely hitting the mark. As per usual, I like the little touch-ups as well. There's a lot of like little, almost meaningless nerfs, but when you combine them or they're part of like your core strategy in Eternal, those pa those like buffs will add up, and I'm pretty excited for that too. I think it's really nice for them to do just like a little bit extra care, give a bunch of numbers out to a bunch of different cards that have seen less play. So, really good overall. Pretty excited for the game uh, moving forward. That's a, a really nice patch. And Jin Annie didn't get nerfed. It didn't get buffed either. But the pirouette like might come up every once in a while. That kind of will suck. But hey, it is what it is. Oh, pirouette had it too good for too long, I think. Tell me which change that you are most excited about in the comments. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, gameplay highlights, and meta reports in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.